Kia ora iwi and welcome along to Inside Netball, a podcast where we chat all things netball here in Aotearoa and also around the world. I feel very fortunate to be hosting Jenny Woods, a com- uh, commentary extraordinaire and former <laughs> Silver Ferns captain, Jean Wilson. Thank you for joining me today, ladies. Thank you. Right, round seven, it was a very exciting one. We saw a steel upset, an extra time thriller last night, but the big talking point for me... Grace Cara playing a full game at goal attack for the Magic, despite only sitting at 43%. What was your take on that one? Well, it was quite a point of discussion, wasn't it, it, after the game? Because, um, you know, it just seemed, you think, why? Why didn't you move her, take her off, put on Kiana Williams or somebody like that? But we've been in touch with... Amy Jean Metcalf, and she's explained what what her thinking was, and it was essentially she wanted to get more ball to Caitlin Bassett, and in that she achieved her goal because she um, CBS scored more goals than she has all season. And when asked, you know, if she'd been tempted as the game wore on because that shooting percentage was so low um, to move it, she sort of said, well, she thought about it. But in actual fact, what she felt was that the errors were, were further down the court, that almost as though the, the shooting numbers was a you know, bit of a red herring, that um, there were other mistakes happening, which actually was, was the case, because I remember, you know, there were a few breakings, there was a not taken in the centre third, those sort of things that would, you know, really hack you off as a coach. Oh, that's interesting. Before I get into my thoughts on it, because, you know, I won't be able to shut up. Dean, <laughs> what, what's your take on it? Well, um, I think, yes, once she's explained why she started that way, I kind of get it. You know, she mixed it up, and I think it was probably clever. They know, and we've been saying they need to get more ball to see this. They did that. They got more ball into her. But in that second half, for me, all of a sudden, the defence um, for the Pulse, they shut down Caitlin, and it meant they were forcing Grace to shoot. And when that happened, I think that's when perhaps a change should have been made and you bring on someone that can shoot. Because if you're going to force that goal attack to shoot, if you've been clever enough to shut down the goal shoot, then bring someone else on. But to your point, her numbers were still up, Caitlin. But I think, yes, they made some individual errors up court, but it didn't help that they were missing some of those shots. And the attempts at one point were very, very similar for the two teams, yet it was the pulse that were up. That was going to be my point, Adine. The attempts were similar, if not very even. And so it's fair to say that there were mistakes up the court, but that's always going to happen regardless. I think Grace missed 10 or so shots, maybe even 11. And I remember watching that game, a lot of those were rebounded um, by not Seabass, so I just, I just don't really get it. I, I understand starting her, bringing Seabass into the game, and I agree, she played better, but you're not going to take Grace off if you want to remove her from the game. You're just switching her to wing attack, where she still has that connection with Caitlin and can still help bring her into the game, but just bring another shooting option in. I don't know, I just feel like the idea was right, but there's something going on at the Magic where things just aren't connecting, and I don't want to use the word desperation because that is way too intense, but they're just trying things, and it, it feels almost out of desperation because they're not performing this season. Well, it's hard, isn't it, because you're at the bottom of the ladder, and I think whenever you're at the bottom of the ladder, it, it's tough. And I get, you know, I take your point about the lack of rebounding because they were up against, what, Kelly Ranawai and um, Kelly Jury, a little bit of height there. Yeah. Um, so just I guess, touch. just a touch, that was a problem. <laughs> but, you know, interesting though, I just thought about this, you know, the Mystics, the earlier game on that same night, I mean, similar discussion mm-hmm. about, um, you know, perhaps questioning why Bailey Mears was kept on for so long. I mean, I think she did make the change in the end because, um, you know, Phil DeVue had shown herself the week before to be pretty proficient. And what I mean I really felt magic in round six round six with Grace coming back into the team had made gains but then they started something quite different in round seven to what they had in round six so I was kind of excited coming into round seven thinking here comes the magic they're gonna you know get they weren't gonna move on the ladder but they were gonna get closer to the other teams on the ladder if they could get the win and the other thing for me too and is you know, Grace is only just coming back. She, she's she been injured. What's that going to have done for her confidence? You know, she's not going to have come off and be happy with shooting 40-something percent. She's going to be disappointed with that. So will that affect her confidence at all? I don't know. I probably don't know her well enough to know if it will rattle her. But, you know, those are the bits and pieces I think you need to take into consideration too. You want her to be playing confident netball, giving that ball into Caitlin Bassett. I would be more worried about Kiana Williams and Chiara Semple sitting on the bench. They have really done nothing wrong this season. Kiana Williams especially has played really well for her first year having to step up. 
sitting on the bench watching another shooter shoot at 40% and not even being looked at. They didn't take their warm-up tees off. They never looked like they were going to come on. What does that do to their confidence? Or were they, was she sitting on the sideline looking at what she was doing with the ball distribution, what she was doing not when she was shooting, but all the other stuff. Right, OK, so an opportunity to learn, perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah, but I was still going to not see Kiana Williams. I am a massive fan. This is a young teenager that every game she's come on, she stepped it up. So disappointed not to see her. It's going to be fascinating to see what Magic do in round eight. Maybe a little tease into what your uh, starting seven at the moment might look like, Adine. We will get to that a little yes. bit later. <laughs> but now, off the back of our pregnancy and contracts chat last week, we've decided to continue that conversation with Phoenix Karika, who's a new mother to baby Palmer. She joins us now. Kia ora, Fee. How are you and how's mum life? Hi, I'm good. It's a um, crazy ride, but I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Fee, I was wondering about training and um, did you ever stop training? You know, obviously you stopped to have the baby, but how quickly were you back into things? Um, that's a great question. I think I just started walking, which is kind of normal after pregnancy, just go for 30 minute walks or something. But um, I was pretty eager to start training as soon as possible. Um, I think because my recovery was so good from birth that I was able to start a bit earlier um, than normal. But um, I think I started actually training a little bit with the Mystics at 12 weeks, maybe, <laughs> post baby. But um, it was now I'm able to, I guess, train a bit harder now. So it's made it easier. And is that because you can leave her for longer or obviously I presume with Pat or with support from family? Yes, um, I'm very lucky with the support that I have. I've got a mum who will pretty much wake up at 5.30 to be here for us at six so I can go to the gym, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, also the confidence to leave her with people um, being older but then also um, she's not very dependent on me as much as when she was. It's nice that she's finally having solids <laughs> and um, liking the bottle. So um, it's easier to leave her and just, I guess, have my own time at training. And talking about that own time, have, have you missed that team environment or has it been nice to have a break after playing, you know, netball for such a long time? To be honest, when I um, was watching the Constellation Cup, I was crying <laughs> because I just missed it. I loved watching, but I really wanted to be out there. So I think for me, that was a good sign because the passion was still there to play. Um, so it's been easy for me to, I guess, leave her at home because I know that I'm enjoying it. And, um, and I know that she's fine and that she's still alive when I get home. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess I do miss it and I've been part of the Mystics environment a couple of times going to their trainings and as much as I've, I'm have i still part of the team, it still feels like I'm a little bit out of touch with what they're doing and um, I really miss being a part of that team and um, I think it just makes me work harder and train harder. Training's going a bit slower than I'd like but I guess I've <laughs> Got to make sure my body's okay before I can go out there. And I want to play, um, you know, good netball, not just be on there because I'm Phoenix Karaka kind of thing. I want to be playing um, top quality netball when I do make it back. Fee, you talked about um, being at a couple of the Mystics trainings and saying you started at 12 weeks. How has that, I guess, um, worked logistically? Like, what was the arrangement there? Or has it been quite casual? Um, how, how are you sort of planning your return? With the Mystics, it has been quite casual because I guess I'm not contracted, so there's no really um, obligation for me to be there, but then also they don't really need me to be there. But Helene's been really good in letting me come whenever I, I please, which is nice. Um, but then I've been picked up um, with the Ferns just as kind of like a a carded athlete just so that I had that support which has been awesome because I guess I was in a bit of a 
unknown position because I have, wasn't with the ferns, I wasn't with mystics. Yeah. So I was a bit lost for a moment there, but um, thank God the ferns picked me up because I've yeah. now got the support of the physio, the oh. trainer. Um, sorry. <laughs> But um, it's made it a lot easier and, yeah, very thankful for the opportunity. So that's interesting, Fee. So who organised the carding? Has is, is, is Dame Knowles been in touch with you regularly? Was it um, a, a something that she kind of was pushing forward or did you ask for that? How did that kind of work out? Yeah, I guess it's been really hard because they, I'm not contracted to anyone, so they didn't want to put pressure on me to come back. But... Um, Knowles did call me after baby to see if I was still keen to play and obviously after watching the films I just wanted to get back out on court um, so that was easy but I think I kind of felt like I had to initiate wanting to come back which I think is fine but I think for someone like me I need a bit of a pressure so that I can commit a bit more and I know there's no like um, in between, there's just the straight, okay, I need to commit to this. And then I got to organize baby. Um, so I like to know what I'm doing. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff, Phoenix, I always think that, that's not talked about when you, you, know, you have a baby. And I was interested, you said before, that you now have the confidence to leave her. But has, has it changed your image of yourself um, be becoming a mother? Um, I don't, honestly, sometimes I'm on my way home from training and I forget that I'm going back to a baby, <laughs> which sounds really bad, but I guess for me that shows that I'm able to kind of zone out of being a mum and really commit to what I'm trying to do, um, but... <laughs> I'd say that sounds very well adjusted. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to think so, but, um... Obviously, there are those nights where I'm like, oh, my gosh, I just I don't want to go to training because I've had three hours sleep or something. But um, I guess it keeps me balanced. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's a hard question, really. <laughs> It's very deep, isn't it? Jenny likes the deep Well, questions. I know I really grappled with it, and I, I know I'm certainly no elite athlete and never have been, but even just as a normal person, um, because none of you are normal, uh, <laughs> that, um, it, it, you know, I found it quite an adjustment. And speaking about the balance yeah. fee as well, you know, some of the other players that have come back after baby said that the balance of having a baby actually puts netball into perspective with having to juggle baby and your love for the game. Can you see how that could be once you get back? That it actually almost adds to the enjoyment of being able to have that time out going and playing netball, but, you know, coming home to baby, win or lose? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I think for me it's just, like, knowing that what I'm doing is going to be worth it and the time that I have away is making sure that it's quality and that... Um, it is a huge adjustment um, but I think I, I just can't wait to play and then have Palmer on the sideline watching like, it's just so exciting and when I think about like when I do have to start playing ANZ or when I am given the opportunity it's oh my gosh like how have the mothers organised like a babysitter um, making sure that they're fed and everything so it's a huge adjustment in like that kind of, I guess, aspect. But um, I'm kind of really missing it all a lot. So I'm just, I'll, I'll just take what I can. Fee, I imagine you've been watching a bit of the ANZ Premiership and yourself being a goal defence out of the game at the moment. Who are you picking to kind of step up in that goal defence position when fern selections do come to play later in the year? Oh, don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> Me? <laughs> I love it. Love it. That's love a goal, it. huh? Um, I, that is my goal. And I think that's really nice that I've got the support and um, Pat is really supportive of that goal of mine. Oopsies. Um, but I don't know. I, I just... I, 
it's hard. I think Curran's playing really well as a goldie, um, but I think that she is just a wicked wing defender and to put on the sideline. Oh, sorry. <laughs> But, um, oh, not the sideline, sorry, the transverse. Mm. Um, yeah. oh, I think it's hard when those little teeth perhaps are starting yeah. to hurt. Well, yeah. <laughs> Fee, you're always so open and honest and we are so grateful uh, for your time and a little uh, bonus to see Palmer as well on our screen. So thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get back to being a mum and can't wait to see you back out there. Oh, thank you. Sorry about it. <laughs> <laughs> She's beautiful. Apologise. Thanks, Fee. Thanks, Fee. That's all right, bye. Right, well, Phoenix Cardiga, so open and honest as always. Adine, what did you make of her conversation? Well, what I loved is it's so obvious the desire is still there. She talked about watching the ferns and just thinking, I want to be back on court. You know, I think way back when I had um, my baby Harper, who's now a teenager, ah, that's how old I am. Um, I remember watching the ferns after I'd had him and was the complete opposite. Watched and went, great. Good luck, girls. You're playing well. Don't want a bar of it anymore. Quite happy sitting on the couch. So really cool to hear that she wants to be back. And, and that's that funny one, when is enough enough? But the other really interesting piece was that she's having to initiate, it sounds like, a lot of the support to wrap around her. There hasn't been something that sort of come in and got around her and said, these are the trainings you need to be, be at. She's really having to push a bit of that herself. Yes, but I also think it's great that she is what they call a carded athlete. So that's when high performance sport provide, like she said, physio trainers. She can go into the Millennium Institute and train one on one with some high performance trainers, run a program. It sounds like Knowles is still in touch and Helene Wilson inviting her into trainings and saying, come on in whenever you want, when you're up to it. That support is great and maybe something that we probably haven't seen in the past for um, pregnant athletes or, or netballers coming back from pregnancy. So there's definitely um, a change in that space. The the other interesting thing is she is a goal defence and we know that goal defenders are there's not a lot of them. There's a in the rarity country. at the moment. Totally. So they're looking after her, which is great. I thought you were going to say we know that goal defenders are superior beings. Oh, that too. Oh, yes. That too, of course. Yes, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're talking about mothers. Something else that came up in the week that's been Anna Harrison, a mother of three. There were whispers, there were talks. Would she make herself available to come out for ferns? Nolan Toto has said, yes, sign her up. I'd love to have her. The next day she came out and said, no, I'm not available. I'm not ready. I'm just playing the stars. This is what it is. Interesting conversation and we're lucky enough to bring in Liana Debrain who played nearly what 20 years at high level to talk about those decisions in retirement. So thank you very much for joining us Floyd. Gosh the decision that Anna Harrison has had to make this week how hard would have that been? Oh gosh I think she would have made um, one decision one hour and the next it will be another decision so very tough call. I mean, you know, it's a little bit of a carrot hanging in front of your nose. We've all been in that black dress and we know how special it is. And especially with Nolene, you know, she's very good at negotiating and, <laughs> and talking to you. So I bet, I, I'm glad I wasn't in her shoes to make that decision. But um, yeah, very tough one. When you're trying to make that sort of decision, Liana, is, is there some or one person you listen to? Or is it like a committee decision? You take a few soundings all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, I think originally you take yourself all over the place. Obviously, she's got family um, and that comes first. And I think you you go through everybody, mum, dad, husband, even the kids. I know um, I talked to Caleb about my decision, but I think ultimately it comes down to what your heart tells you. Um, I know the brain will fight the heart all the time, but at the end of the day, if you really go sit down, and listen to your heart, that's the one to follow. I mean, how scary is it to finally call enough is enough? You know, you get to that point where you can make some good money playing netball and all of a sudden you're gonna pull yourself away from that. Like, how scary is it to finally say, to let those words out, I'm not available? Oh, yeah, no, it's very scary, especially if you don't have a plan B and I think um, you know that's the, the scary bit is you don't know uh, what's going to happen next or where the next paycheck is coming from. Um, I think you know as well as prepared as you can be even when that happens it, it's still a scary thought to think okay well I'm going to go into a full-time job which is um, very different as we all know um, 
do something that we've done for the last 20 years. So it is scary. And financially, you know, especially with three kids for, for Anna, it would be it would have been really tough because it's like you say, it is, is good money being in there. Um, and going into the workforce, you don't quite get the same rates. Floyd, like Anna, uh, you retired internationally in 2016, but continued mm. to play domestically for four years. Was that always in your plan to sort of transition yourself out slowly? And do you think that's what she's doing as well? Whew, was it that long? <laughs> Didn't feel that long. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I think ultimately, it, you know, like international netball is way different because you play day in, day out. And myself, personally, I just didn't feel like I could... Um, handle that with my body and um, the recovery phases I need a bit of more time so that was my main decision for that but I still love the game and I still felt that I could give back um, to my team in New Zealand and that's probably why I stayed on as long as I did um, and then yes just just figuring out what you want to do I, I think you know <laughs> just had a joke about it with Jen that that I've been everywhere and tried all sorts of different things and and you don't quite know what you want to do until you're actually in it and you go oh maybe this is not for me so it is a scary bit um, to go well what's next and that's probably why you hang on and, and make those plans and and have an exit plan but my exit plan didn't quite go as planned so that can also happen which is another scary thought but you know everything always works out I'm also a firm believer in that. Do you think there's more Liana that netball could do for players thinking about how they're going to transition out of the game? Um, yeah, to be honest, I, I think it's more using those resources. I think it's there um, if you want to take it. But, you know, I think when you're an athlete and you're in that zone, um, you train daily, you have your routines and you kind of think, oh, it will be all right, something will come up. Um, if I could go back, I'd probably spend a bit more time figuring out what it is I really like to do and spend a bit more time in the work environment um, and yes, they can help you to probably get those connections. But at the end of the day, as an athlete, you just basically go and have to knock on the door and use those networks um, that are made available to you during that time. Uh, Liana, under the Players Collective, you know, there is a mechanism in there that tries to protect part of the week so people can study or work. Mm. How important is mm. it that netball retains that so people have that opportunity? Oh, mate, I, I cannot reiterate it more often for those athletes now is actually use that because, um, yeah, it's, it's like I say, figuring out what you want to do. It's actually you think that's what you want to do and then you go into something and you go, oh, this is not really me or how I expected it to be. So if I could turn back the pages, I'd probably spend those 10 hours a week or five hours a week even going into organisations that I think I might like, um, spend a bit of time with them, talk to the people and and find out a little bit more because you actually really don't know what it's like because our lives are so different that, as athletes. So, yeah, if I, if I could give any advice is, is make sure you use that time and, and make sure that's what you want to do. And when you stop, I think... Um, you know, it's so important that you actually know what you want to do because it is very scary if you don't. Well, Floor, you're now in a position and in a role that you're very happy in, in the workspace and in mm. uh, your business career as such. How did you get there? And, and tell us what you're doing at the moment. <laughs> yeah, how did I get this? Good question. Um, no, I so obviously after I finished with the Stars, um, I got a great opportunity to go at the Chief, to work at the Chiefs. And that kind of happened... Um, using your networks again. I, I think I've made about 100 phone calls after the, my plan B that I had and planned didn't quite work out. So uh, used the networks, got lucky enough to get into the Chiefs, which was a great environment um, to learn about how an eight to five job basically works because I've never done it. So, um, you know, lots of lessons being learned over there and and how to to actually manage time a bit more efficiently and especially be a single mum and, and all of that stuff. So um, lucky enough to be there, but it wasn't actually ticking all the boxes for me. You know, there was something a bit lacking. I think the biggest thing I miss is the adrenaline that that comes with um, sport and, and your performance. So in a work environment, yes, you need to perform, but not to that level. So, um, and how I came 
to the job that I am now working at a construction company called Total Help in Hamilton. And we do do lots of different construction stuff. And I'm my title is general manager, but I've still got so much to learn. I'm learning everything from project man, man, management to QS. And yeah, it's challenging, but I think it's the adrenaline and the challenge that it gives me, that, that's why I love it so much, because that's what Netball provided for me is that challenge. And every day I had to think and think of my oppositions and think how I'm going to beat them the next day. So this is kind of similar to it. i got to think how I'm going to make this business better, what I can do, what skills I can bring to it um, that I've learned over the years. And, and I think that's really a passion of mine. I've always been interested in building and developing and all of that stuff. So that's kind of where I'm aiming to. But I think the, the biggest thing for me here is I can grow with the company. And um, whereas, you know, some something like the Chiefs, yes, they were great to me, so um, don't take anything from this, but I couldn't grow with a company because it's kind of, you know, it is what it is. So whereas now I've got opportunity to, to step up, which is quite exciting for me. Wow, that is awesome, Flo. It's great to hear you were a total boss on the court and it's great to hear that you're <laughs> now a boss off the court too. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Right, well, really interesting to hear from Liana Debrain and hear her say that those hours put aside that some teams are supposed to use uh, for study or work uh, and or any sort of experience or PD, she's saying everyone needs to grab hold of those hours and really make use of them. Adine, your work with the Players Association, how's that supposed to look? Yeah, well, I think it's really important and was one of the first things I think that was negotiated in the collective um, many years ago was you've got to have that block of time to allow players to study or work because we don't know when injury is going to happen. You don't know when pregnancies are going to happen or someone takes your spot. So your career is going to finish at some point. The more you're set up and the more skills you have, as we've heard Liana talk about, the more confidence you're going to have going into that workforce. The challenge of those hours is not all teams at all times adhere to it and to be fair to that that's because they can negotiate as a team with the coach and the management about training within those hours that are supposed to be blocked off but I do think that's such an important thing and something that netball has had for a long time when we think about different occupations that some of these netball players have had that's so important to have that balance and I actually think it makes you a better netballer. Well that was I was just going to pick up a point there that's exactly how I felt when I started sort of putting more attention into my life outside of netball, started working here, starting working in the crowd goes wild. I found that I was enjoying my netball so much more. You take the pressure away. Life doesn't just become about performance and selection. And I ended up loving my netball and actually playing some of the best years of my career when I wasn't just solely focused on netball. So great to see. I know some teams struggle. You think of the Steel, for example, they're juggling players in Dunedin and in Vicargo trying to find hours that's going to suit everyone to train in between and, and make it all work out isn't always going to be the case and I think that's what's great about netball is that we can be flexible but at the same time I think Floyd made a great point that we, we do also really need to maximise the potential as athletes and as players within those hours and I think there can be better education around that for a lot of players. Absolutely, and, and you just have to look at the players that have come out and made successful transitions um, into their careers. You know, you think of Leslie Rumble, you often see her now as a doctor on the side of the netball court. We've got Amarangi Malisala, who's just finishing her law degree. She wants to work with youth, and you know, that's just awesome that we've got those role models within our sport. Well, echoing what you were saying, I was thinking of Claire Kirsten, who I remember, you know, had been in the Ferns and, and then got out and then interviewing her last year and she said, you know, because she played just such good netball, got itself back into the black dress and she said it, was, it all came good when I just concentrated on my teaching, wasn't worried about, you know, all the other stuff and absolutely storm what you said. Yeah, awesome. Right, well, we do have time to have a look at our starting sevens, if we dare, because we Ooh. are at the halfway point of the ANZ Premiership. Round seven is all done. So, ladies, I've got a little bit... I don't know, a little bit safe, so I might go last, I think. I don't know. Oh. We'll let Jen, I'm interested in yours, Jen, because I imagine you've got... Oh, we're going to list them off? List, well, how, yeah. do, how do we want to do this? Do position by position. Okay. okay. Cool. Uh -huh. Great. Position Round the cycle. Right. Okay. So, okay, my goalkeeper, well, I think because she is the form goalkeeper, but very hard saying that because there's another one. Sulu Fitzpatrick. Okay. 
Funny that you started with defence. Yeah, I, was, I, 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 I always, always write it, so was I. I always start with oh, defence. That's because you play there. Oh, oh my goodness. That's right. Love it. Sula Fitzpatrick, I see, I see what you're saying. Jane Watson, though, for me, she's my one pick out of my seven from the tactics. She's had some quiet periods this season, but she's coming into her own, and who wouldn't have a um, game winner as your goalkeeper? Yeah, I'm with you, Adine, too. I had picked Jane Watson, and it's also for her leadership from the back as well. When she's in that goalkeeper position, she has time to yell at her troops down the court, and she's um, very accomplished in the international level. We know she can play goalkeeper against... Oh, oh she's, she's got, got her finger, finger up. up. Well, Jenny's got her finger up. She's my goal defence. What? Yes, okay. because I wanted them both. So what do you do? <laughs> you have to make way somehow. And I, and I mean, we saw this. We saw this, didn't we, in the Constellation Cup. Um, Nolene, you know, wisdom around several times but um, I mean I could have had those either way around I all I knew was that I wanted them both on the court so um, there she is Jane Watson okay. goal defense but you've gone without Anna Harrison she's absolutely well, she's my goal but she's available for ANZ we're not talking ferns here we're talking best oh, ANZ myself. performers oh you've picked A and you've picked no, well, anyway, ferns. well no this is no I still stand by myself okay I'm, I'm going Anna Scarlett, or Anna Harrison, sorry, all the way. The impact she's having, just the fact that she throws her body around, the Harrison hoist, she got a great reject um, in this round that just gone by. I just couldn't go past her. I, I see what you're saying. I've done a Jenny and I've also gone who I think will be the third ah. seven, but that's fine. And I have gone <laughs> Karen Berger because I think the two of them, Karen and Jane, their combination is growing. It's only going to get better and better and they, have, they are going to have the whole season working together. So I'd like to see them starting together in the fence. Well, my next point, I've got Karen Berger <laughs> at wing defence oh, because they were the three defenders I wanted. So, you know, and... And that's that. And that's that. And it, it's easily accommodated. And it is a bit tough because I think um, Sam Winder's fabulous player. I would have her just there to do the speaking commitments, actually. Um, <laughs> she is so good on the interview. But... Um, Karen Berger, wing defence. You're moving everyone's positions around. Well, Even I, Sam Winder, she's been playing mostly centre and you want to push her. So, no, fair enough. Choose the best players and then find yes. the spot. Um, I've gone, and my one selection from the Pulse is Maddie Gordon. Now, I know she's making the transition from wing attack back to wing defence, but it's her potential for me. You know, how often is it her name that we're talking about at the end of a game? She's a special player. She's got special energy, so I couldn't go past her. Dean, again, I am with you. Maddie what? Gordon at wing Excellent. defence. Excellent. I, if you asked me that a couple of weeks ago, I wouldn't have had her there, but she's starting to tidy up her game and she's got that X factor and just manages to get uh, come up with turnover ball when they need it. So, yeah, she's my wing defence as well. Centre. Now, I wrestled with centre because, GP, oh boy, have we got a nice lot of, you know, mid-quarters or what. And I I had Kimi Oropoi, I had Saunders, I then put Maddie Gordon in and then... I, anyway, and I came back to Saunders. Okay. This is going to be the I one we I... agree on. Oh, We're going to agree on one. Well, well, I've gone thought, Saunders you know, as well. So much experience with this. Um, and I can still, when I shut my eyes at night, I see her saving that ball down the sideline in the semi-final <laughs> the against World England Cup. in 2019. <laughs> so on the strength of one game, she's in a centre. And I'm going for her as well, experience. You need that leader in the middle. Sam Winders went really close because, again, I just love that lady. I think she's got um, so much to give to a team, but Shannon Saunders, she pipped it for me at centre. Interesting. Well, I wanted Shani in there, but for me, she's more of a wing attack, and when she came on in the World Cup at wing attack, had real impact. She kind of had that replacement wing attack role. She's playing wing attack mostly at the steel. And so I actually went Claire Kirsten, who... Mm -hmm is solid without being spectacular so far this season, but just someone who you know isn't going to make a whole lot of mistakes, counters the rest of my midcourt nicely, which will move on to wing attack. Yeah, she's hard to argue against, actually, yeah, Kirsten. She is good. Wing attack, um, Gina Crampton. I, it's, she's a funny one, Gina Crampton, because she's been around a long time now. And, she's, and I, you know, I was never the biggest fan, but in the last three or four seasons, um, she's a bit like Saunders, actually. To me, they have just stepped up their game, so she's my wing attack. And I really struggled with this one because big fan of Crampton, playing outstanding in the purple dress, but I went for flair. I needed someone in this team with real flair. Not to say that Crampton doesn't have it, but when you speak about flair, you think Elizabeth Toyaba. Mm -hmm. 
that turning, that passing, that vision, she, yeah, absolutely for me, wing attack, I hope she really pushes for a silver fern spot because she brings something different. I'd love to see her in the squad and in the side, but still a part of her, I still think she just needs to tidy up. She's a little bit uncontrolled at times, but totally agree, she's spectacular to watch, but I'm with you, Jean. I also went Gina Crampton, just because she often does no wrong. Well, I just wondered was Toya, because I'm a, another big fan, I'm, I'm a fan of them all, as you know. But Toyava, <laughs> if you get a big, tall wing defence like um, Heffernan, uh, and that, you know, she can shut the shorter Toyava down. But yes. now we move to goal attack? Yes. Yes. Now, this, I, I had a person here, and then watching the round seven game between the, the Stars and the Tactics, what a great game. But it did alter my decision making, actually, and I just thought, oh, I don't know. So, in the, in the end, Who have you I've gone put, for now, Jim? I put Maya Wilson out at goal. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm no, loving your team. There's you someone I have to make room for at the end, you see. And I want there's no I, there's no way I'd leave Maya Wilson out. I love that you were putting the best players and just <laughs> manipulating <laughs> the positions. I, I know, like you your thinking. It, no, it's good. <laughs> well, I've gone for someone that sat the whole of round seven on the bench. I went Kiana Williams. Oh, yeah. I, Kiana I know fan. I am a fan. Mm. I keep watching Kiana. Again, it's that potential that she's got out there. She's, again, the player we keep talking about um, before and after a match. Out of all the goal attacks, I feel like she's having the biggest impact at times. She can support her shooter. She's happy to go to post. Um, I love the little off the goal post. Just the confidence she has, is, and she's only 18. Love it. Okay, The goal attack position was the one I found the hardest, and I actually struggled between two players, one of them being Tiana Maturo, who neither of you have talked about, but I just really feel like she's stepping up and could be that key maker that we need down that end. Been but a good move for her down. It has. I did end up going with the old faithful to pie. Selby Rickett just because of the difference she made to this tactic side with her return and just to have some stability in there. Once she sort of gets herself um, back to full game fitness, I just feel like she's the best option at the moment. See, none of them are bad choices, are they? No, I mean, no, you know, I, I could live with all of those. Mm. Um, and now for the goal shoot, I would put Grace Wecky in at goal shoot. I'd get her into that. And of course, as I say, this is my silver fern team, you see. <laughs> so she would come in under Nolene Taurua. She'd get that all-encompassing coaching uh, and not to suggest she's not getting that now but you know it would just give her more experience because surely to goodness one day she's going to be there and um, let's start now. <laughs> I like I actually really like your um, Wiki you Wilson want combination. Team, yeah I do like that combination <laughs> in the shooting circle but I stuck with the positions they've been playing in an ANZ so um, so I actually went and I struggled because I Grace Wiki has been excellent. But I went Maya Wilson, and the reason I went Maya Wilson, one, because she's been great, but I would love to see Toyava feed Wilson, and that's why I went for that combination. We know how, what Toyava can do with Wiki, but imagine with Wilson again. I just think Wilson's really been stepping up. She doesn't just use the hold, she uses that roll, and I just think there would be balls coming from everywhere. It would make for great netball to watch. It would be interesting to see how Peter Toyava would do in that situation and whether she can prove that she's not just biffing it to Grace and the sort of throw and hope and Grace is making her look good. So I do like that suggestion, but I have gone with Grace and Wiki as well. I I just think she's a guaranteed world beater, surely, just putting up 50 goals nearly every week and um, just someone different that we haven't had in the Ferns for a very long time. So that was my pick. But it I was must, tough. It was tough, and a lot really of it tough. was tough. But the other thing I must say that's really impressed me this season is how good the players are at speaking, yes. interviewing. And I mean, I know, and, and even the young ones. And like Grace Week is a good example, actually, because you think, geez, she's... 18, is she 18? Yeah. And you think, oh, what, you know, what will she be like? And she's fabulous. And uh, Maddie Gordon, awesome. Um, so whoever, if somebody's giving them media training, that's good, keep it up, because it makes such a difference um, for the for the, you know, for the for the punters. Yeah, you feel proud of our sport, right? You yep. feel really proud when a microphone goes in front of a netballer's um, face. They are giving great answers. They are just engaging, and I feel very lucky that we get the honour of being able to interview them. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, well, I think that is all we have time for today. But as always, great chat. Thank you very much, Jenny and Adine, for Thanks, joining Dawn. me. Make sure you comment below um, if you have any suggestions, any feedback, any topics you'd like us to cover we'd be sure to have a good old chinwag about them so make sure you tune in next time and we'll see you next week